Alrighty, welcome back to Real Cast Fishing. Your host, Glenn, with the City of Allen Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team on YouTube. And today it, we're talking, oh, fishing things. In particular, this is the eve before Texas uh, Tarrant Regional Water District Fly Fest, TRWD Fly Fest. And what that is, is a uh, fly fishing event hosted by oh i forget who but bottom line trwd and it's over there by the banks of the trinity at the acme brick uh headquarters and what uh you'll see there is a variety of fly fishing things to fly tying some seminars some classes and additionally there's this big trout fly fishing contest and they do stock some Fairly nice sized trout out there, so keep that in your back pocket if you have the chance to make it there tomorrow. I know it's been rainy, it's a little chilly, but it looks like things will clear up tomorrow. So you have the opportunity to maybe get um, introduced to fly fishing, if not maybe, um, well, uh, pick up some, some new tips and whatnot uh, while you're there. And plus, it's also a free event there at the uh, Banks of the Trinity in uh, Fort Worth. Oh, and, uh, well, it's Friday, so let's have a beer while we're here. Mm. <clears throat> Anyhow, before we go into the uh, GRWD Fly Fest, which is tomorrow, uh, I wanted to just bring up a couple of things that I've been doing recently on the um, the fishing channel, COAF, Fuel Team. Uh, some of the key things that we've been looking at, at least over the course of the last few weeks is some ultralight bait casting. So uh, I call it BFS, Bait Finesse Systems Fishing. Uh, I've been try taking out different um, rod and reel combos, specifically that Kingfisher Flight or Feather Flight Kingfisher Reel. Uh, that one I'm able to cast trout magnets, been able to catch basically three limits of trout so far this year, initially with Trout magnets up at Waterloo, up in Denison, and then over there in Town Lake in McKinney. Uh, this is all in Texas. <coughs> Excuse me. And over there, I was using some power worms, or uh, yeah, power worms with uh, two split shot. It was, uh, and then over by uh, Murphy, was able to get some fishing done there and catch a limited trout. When they stocked it a couple of weeks ago, and what was working there were super dupers. And one of the key takeaways with those super dupers, and I noticed this in particular with Murphy City Complex Pond, is when you're casting, do a slow retrieve. Let it sink, get down to the lower layer of the pond, and reel in slowly, and just wait for that strike. And that was working for me. But just uh, lo and behold, the next week, guess what? Uh, they only weren't wanting bait, and so I didn't get any trout, but I did get some uh, nice sized bass. I think it's the biggest one I've gotten so far this year. Um, it was in the shallows. You can tell they're starting to starting to get into their beds and starting to, to get that spawn kicked in. So hopefully, with the weather warming up, <clears throat> might have a good opportunity to catch a, a bass or two, especially this uh, time of year when um, well, there's some bigger ones. Especially if you put your polarized glasses on. And you can kind of sight cast to them. And I guess one of the key takeaways that I find when you're working, especially if you're fly fishing, as well as if you're just, um, well, bait casting and whatnot, is if you can use a lure that is high biz so that when you cast into uh, or near and you drag that lure fly and whatnot through uh, the bass's bed, uh you are pretty much setting the hook, not on the reaction of the bass striking, but instead when you see your lure disappear because of that off color from the surrounding water, as you bring it through, your fly disappears. So let's say I'm using a white fly or maybe a chartreuse fly and it's dragging through there and I can see it with my polarized glasses and all of a sudden, bang, it's gone. I'm setting the hook. Uh, that tends to more often than not get more hookups than uh than me just trying to react to a, a bass striking or the feel <clears throat> excuse me while i take a little sip of uh let's see what is this one real ale brewing company real heavy anyways the other thing about 
um, tomorrow in Fort Worth, Tarrant Regional Water District, TRWD Fly Fest. Uh, they do offer some brews that uh, you might like, so think about that as well as a, a little wine or two. Uh, but also, it is a fly fishing event, family oriented, so bring the kids. Uh, there'll be food and whatnot, and uh, I haven't missed one since it first started, and I found it by accident. <clears throat> And when I say when I found it by accident, I was actually headed west of Fort Worth to go do some fishing. And it started to, uh, I guess, start to sprinkle and whatnot. And then I was just driving by and <clears throat> I noticed a sign saying TRWD Fly Fest. And uh, I made a turn over there and ended up uh, actually even joining the big trout contest. And I actually had a hook up there. I lost them as I was bringing them in, but... Hey, there's some big ones over there, so uh, I plan to be there tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can set up this podcast uh, somewhere, and if you're not able to make it, uh, I can at least give you a good idea as to what the well, what the what the area looks like, and possibly what some of the trout that they'll catch. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of the big things is, is uh, on that day tomorrow, Saturday, uh, the day of the event. Uh, it's catch and release into that uh, area where they're going to be stocking these big trout. Uh, but guess what? Next day, you're welcome to come over there. It's a put and take fishery. It's not going to, the, these trout won't stay there very long because of the heat. That'll be coming to us here in uh, North Texas sooner than later. Uh, but it has a good opportunity. Um, three, four, five pound trout have been caught and released as well as caught later on. Uh, and that's kind of my favorite things of uh, going down there to TRWD Fly Fest. So uh, keep that in your back pocket. Uh, also, uh, let me think. Uh, you will have to have a fishing license. So if you are going to fish there, um, do plan on that. They do monitor the area where the trout uh, contest is. It's It's going to be restricted. You can do some fly fishing in certain areas outside of the contest area and then further i think it's up river there is a put and take section as well where they normally stock both texas parks and wildlife as well as uh, the tarrant regional water district uh, stockings <coughs> so uh, if you just want to catch a trout or two there you, you may have a good chance or not I, it's going to be weird because we did get a lot of rain yesterday and i remember that first year that they hosted it the river was high you can see some of my old um, videos of of the event. Uh, you may you may get a good idea as to how fast that water can flow. Uh, additionally, some of the things that I like doing is uh, I'll bring my polarized glasses. I'll I'll look at the water and see if I can find some of those holes and and runs and whatnot where they'll be lurking. But it's going to be a little bit harder this year, and I would say mainly because the the water is going to be up excuse me <coughs> with the uh water level probably going to be up because of all that rain we've gotten uh there's a good likelihood that it may be a little bit tougher to catch a fish or two there um but that should make interesting things because then we'll definitely see some different techniques and whatnot that may work to catch these guys uh if you look at uh the channel coaf field team uh, and look up the TRWD or Fly Fest playlist or uh, just do a quick search online uh, or in YouTube TRWD Fly Fest and just say COAF. Uh, you might even get a glimpse or at least get a chance to see some of these older videos that I put in there. Give you an idea of what, uh, uh, what the event looks like and some of the fish that are caught there. And then I've, I've got several live streams as well that I've, I've posted there. Um I've got the chat up, and you guys are welcome to ask uh, any questions. Let me see. Live chat visible. Okay, so chat window's up, and I, I've used this before where I've been able to answer any questions. So uh, I'll just keep it open if anyone has any questions concerning the event, TRWD Fly Fest tomorrow. Um, maybe I might be able to answer those. Additionally, uh, here in the North Texas area, specifically Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, 
the suburb that I live in, city of Allen. Uh, from our standpoint here, uh, I am seeing bass starting to uh, spawn. I am starting to see the bluegill now. Uh, I ended up catching a couple of a nice sized bluegill the other day uh, on the commute back from uh, where I work over there in Arlington. And uh, let's see, the local ponds here, I definitely seen uh, some bass as well as caught a few, released them and whatnot. And I've been using basically that ultralight bait casting technique that, um, well, it's got a bug in me right now. I, I definitely have been hooked onto this. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a great concept. You take a, they call it bait finesse systems, BFS fishing basically ultralight bait casting and what that does for you is allows you to cast these 1 16th ounce or lighter lures in some cases that trout magnet which weighs about one gram and you're able to catch trout catch bluegill catch, catch bass and you get a good opportunity to well fight these guys i mean i've got, I've got one uh rod reel set up right now with two pound test in fact here let me go grab it here uh, bear with me <coughs> All right, I'm back. Let me, uh, let me put on the headset here. Okay, I think. Uh, let me see. It, yeah, yeah, almost. I'm still alive. Okay. Um, so what I was talking about is I've got several setups. The one that I have in the most recent video I posted, where I was using a shorter rod, and it's the Cast King Zephyr BFS reel. Goes about seventy bucks or so on uh, Amazon. This one right here has the real clicker, so it makes a noise when it, the drag's being pulled out right here. And uh, this one's worked out really well. It's on a little four foot, four and a half foot lightning rod that I picked up 30 plus years ago. And this baby's still ticking and kicking. And I've caught some nice size fish with it. 1 16th ounce, about what this one will take. Uh, the one that I used the other day that you'll see in that video that I just posted, I think earlier today, that one is the same reel setup, but without a reel clicker. It's lined with six pound test. The two pound kind of gets right underneath the spool at, in so, at some cases. And, uh, you end up having to untangle it. Uh, but I did add the high speed spool bearing and I would say I can cast about a 124 ounce, 1.6 gram lure, no problem. Uh, that one's been uh, a, a go-to one for me. Uh, this one is a Scorpion BFS XG, uh, Scorpion 17 BFS XG, yeah. And it's on the handing rod. It's the six foot ultralight rod. Can handle trout magnets when I have the other reel. For this one, this is mainly 1 16th ounce. Um, I do like the Shimano Scorpion 17 because it does have seal bearings and I've taken this out in salt water for speckled trout and sand trout, uh, basically using two pound test line and getting a little fun, uh, catching them on tandem rigs with the old spec rigs from when I, I was a kid growing up over there on the, on the uh, Texas coast. All right, so this one's a fun one and uh, I definitely am looking forward to another run to the coast and possibly hook it up again with a few of those specks and sand trout. All right, and then this one is the trout magnet caster. This is uh, the Feather Flight Kingfisher. Uh, it has two pound line currently on it, and I've got a I've got a trout magnet on. All right. And it weighs one gram. And the last fish I caught with this one was a fairly nice sized bass that you'll probably see in some of the videos I've posted. Um, this thing's a four, it's a four and a half foot uh, rod. The one thing that people will talk about is the color. It looks kind of ugly and I have to agree. It's not the greatest, but it sure can cast. A little quirky on the setting the brakes for it, but uh, in the end, uh, you can cast trout magnets out of the box with this guy. Uh, there is another one that has come out made by the same company, Feather Flight, and it's the Cormorant, and it's basically, I would say, basically the same thing, except it's um, 
cosmetically better looking plus it's got a real clicker and i think it took some of the quirks from the the, <coughs> the kingfisher and uh corrected them with the cormorant so if you get a chance to uh, take a look at that one tell me about it, it i'm kind of interested in that one as well okay so that's what i got when it comes to the ultralight bait casting the other thing that I've been doing is, is I started doing these quick tie fly ties. I've done it before where I show you a particular fishing fly pattern that uh, I'll tie and I'll post a video that's under a minute. So YouTube shorts uh, version so you can get the quick and down and dirty to see how the, the, the fly is tied in the pattern. But this time I'm kind of mixing it up. So my plan is to tie these flies. And that same day that I've tied it is to take it to one of the local ponds and whatnot and see if I can catch something. And hopefully I'm able to show you that uh, that particular fish and fly uh, works for uh, fishing as well as catching a few fish. And maybe some quirks on that particular fly that um, maybe how you fish it. In some cases I've fished some of the flies like the, the damsel fly that I just uh, tied in the last uh, quick tie fly tie quick trip video. Uh, I'm using this little damsel fly, two marabou plumes, and pretty much a, a bead chain eye, and uh, it's it's doing really well uh, catching bass once I figured out the pattern. Here, bear with me. I think my, my refrigerator is making some noise here. I'm going to go turn it off real quick. The compressor sounds uh, maybe a little annoying here. <coughs> All right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, better. Uh, that noise kind of gets a little little uh, bothersome. Okay, uh, so I was telling you, this is the quick tie fly tie. Uh, I take the video now, and when I tie it, um, just basically take a few minutes or so to tie it, but I'll speed it up so it's about 30 seconds or so. Then I'll use the other 30 seconds to <clears throat> show you how I've caught something with that particular fly. So that's the intent of that uh, series. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm continuing on with the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing uh, podcast series. Uh, the next one should be taking us to tips 71 through 75. And I'm hoping there might be some good information there for those that are uh, interested in maybe uh, taking up the sport as well as, um, well, maybe already of taken up the fly fishing addiction and uh, maybe there's a few tips there that uh, Charlie Myers and I think it's K K something I forgot the name again uh, that uh, co-authored the book bear with me let me uh, clear the throat here <clears throat> all right so I hope your Friday is going well uh, the eve of the GRWD fly fest from the standpoint of uh, how we do this in, on the on the field team uh, in our uh, schedule for the year. We usually close out the trout season at the end of TRWD Fly Fest. And so I'll start shifting over from cold weather fishing species and shifting over to warmer weather. Uh, the next few weeks, <clears throat> that's when I'll be focusing more on the pond fishing because the bass will be there spawning. The bluegill will start coming out. And it's just a great time to be hitting uh, the different uh, ponds and creeks and whatnot and rivers. I know the white bass or sandies are, are running up the uh, creeks and whatnot. Uh, and then later on, things will warm up and I'll start hitting the lake, taking out the kayak. So you start seeing some shifts in the videos from taking you from pond fishing to kayak fishing. Uh, when I'm kayak fishing, I'll do a couple of things, either do a lot of kayak trolling Bottom bouncing for white bass, catfish, or whatever's biting. Uh, additionally, uh, I'll take out some jug lines, set those jug lines out, and catch a, a mess of catfish so that we can have a little fish fry. Something different, though, is last year and then into this year, um, I made some modifications to my jug lines. Uh, previously, I was using either the self the uh, flagging jug lines as well as these little dumbbell looking jug lines, and uh, I kept kind of brainstorming about ways where I can deploy these a lot quicker because the the part that slows you up the most when you're setting up a jug line is when you're first launching or deploying those jugs. 
you have to unwind it, drop it down to the bottom, figure out the depth, and then you lock it in place. And then you move on to the next. And then once you have them after that, you're able to go and do whatever you need to make adjustments and, and move them fairly quickly after that. But that initial setup kind of slows things down. <coughs> well, last year I came up with this contraption, this modification. I call it the self-setting jug line. And I kind of looked at uh, or got the idea from a ice fishing tip-up. I noticed that in the ice fishing tip-up, they have a little winding wire deal that will secure the line uh, when you're ice fishing. Well, if you take that little device or contraption and you move it horizontally, uh, you're able to uh, still continue to deploy the line, the jug line, and not worry about setting it because it'll set for you. It'll lock that line in place and you can just move on to the next and get them all deployed. I've, I've got one video where I posted it and you can see fairly quickly I've, I've deployed six jug lines. What would normally have taken me 30, 40 minutes to get out there it just takes me basically uh, just paddling a few yards and I've got all six out. So uh, that's what I plan on doing this uh, upcoming warmer weather season and taking the kayak out to the local lake and doing some of these jug line fishing as well as the uh, kayak trolling, the bottom bouncing. Bottom bouncing is is nice because you're really fishing not with your pole but with your kayak. You're launching or you're casting the line, letting it hit the bottom and you're dragging that slab and you're pretty much back paddling and doing a... Uh, well, controlling your line as well as maneuver, maneuvering your line so it goes to where you want it or where you think the bass are or the white bass in this case. And uh, you're really fishing with your kayak instead of your, your rod. And that, that seems fun. Plus, the other good thing about kayak fishing is, is if you don't catch anything, well, uh, you get at least a good workout in. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a break here real quick. Um, chat window's up. If you do have any questions or comments and whatnot, I definitely uh, will answer them. I think last time we did this, there was a, a good amount of questions that were pretty pretty good um, to uh, well discuss. So right now, fish, Fishing Ramblings on the Real Cast Fishing uh, Podcast, and I'm hosting it as the, uh, well, as your host. <clears throat> And uh, the big thing that I, I, I am excited about again is we got TRW Fly Fest tomorrow. The other thing to keep in your back pocket, though, is across the border, just north of us, less than two hours, Blue River, Oklahoma. It's now March, so the whole area is now a put-and-take fishery. There's no catch-and-release section there. And what I heard from others is the trout that they stock <coughs> throughout the river there are some nice size ones compared to that they normally have been stocking over the course of the season. So as this season closes out, 2023-2024, um, if you have an opportunity to make it up there, I think upwards about March into April, you may have a good opportunity still to catch a trout or two. After that, it'll start shifting over. They'll start stocking the river with catfish. And then you have another opportunity to catch some smallmouth and whatnot. So, hey, uh, keep that Blue River in your back pocket. All righty. Anyhow, um, my plan here in the next few is tomorrow, hit TRWD Fly Fest over there at the Banks of the Trinity, over there by the Acme Brick Company in Fort Worth, and uh, maybe give you a few live streaming while we're there at the event, and give you an idea of what is happening in the uh, in the area. And maybe you might meet a few folks that maybe want to just talk about fishing, because sure, truly, if I'm not fishing, I definitely have no issue with talking about fishing, all right? Okay, uh, so with that, just wanted to uh, touch base with y'all, let y'all know what the plans are, and well, uh, just keep it keep it simple. Uh, TRW Fly Fest tomorrow. After that, we're going to shift over to warm weather, uh, pond fishing, creek fishing, river fishing, and seeing how that goes. And then as things warm up after that, we'll shift over to hitting the local lake. In this case, our local lake is Lake Levon, just uh, down the road from me. And uh, probably having a few, well, trips out there. Being in the kayak or a little John boat. Got that little kicker motor. Um, 
putting out some jug lines or just setting out some uh, rod and reels and hopefully catching whatever bites. All right. Till then, all for now. Next time, catch y'all later and good luck and good fishing from the Real Cast Fishing Podcast. <laughs> Thank you.